the electric bus industry is experiencing rapid global growth with over 635,000 e-buses in operation as of 2024 and annual sales rising by 30% to more than 70,000 units. In Europe, electric buses now make up over 42% of all new city bus registrations. With projections pointing to over 1 million e-buses globally by 2032, the sector is a key driver of the transition to zero-emission public transport, with some big players and some very ambitious companies. One of such is Temsa. We talked to Burak Onur, who started working in Temsa in 2004. For the last 15 years, he's been developing the electrical vehicle business and R&D. We saw that everybody's working on the electric vehicles where there was no electric vehicles around. We always start things uh, early because when you start things early, then you have time to uh, make it uh, perfect. So we believe that uh, after some period of time, the battery bus and the diesel bus will be selling at the same price. In old times, and actually like like 10 years ago, the most important part was the range of the battery. For example, the more battery you put on the vehicle, it's better because they are asking for a range. But right now it's changing. Our aim is to switch all of our vehicles to electric versions. We started about like 2010. Actually, everything started with the uh, seventh uh, frame project in, in European uh, Commission and we saw that everybody's working on the electric vehicles where there was no electric vehicles around. So we saw that uh, let's build a team that is working on this electric vehicle project. At that time in 2013, we said, let's do a project with a university. And everything started with the uh, project that we started on the Tukitak National Science Behind the Foundation of Turkey. And it was a cold project. It's like it was like a horizon project and we started in 2010 and we have completed this project in 2013. At the end of the project, we had one nine meter electric bus, which mm -hmm. is actually the first designed electric bus in, in Turkey by that time. Temsa is a Turkey-based electric buses and coaches manufacturer with a production site in Adana. Starting its first venture in electrical buses in 2010, today, Temsa developed a rapidly growing EV business exporting about 80% of the buses to 66 countries worldwide. The company aims to have 50% of its sales generated from electric buses by 2030. Since 2010, Temsa's electric vehicle division has continued to grow steadily. One innovation follows another, and the company keeps progressing. In fact, the history of Temsa's research and development is rich with innovation and bold new ventures. Of course, there would be a lot of things that we were tried uh, in the past. We tried to do the electric inverters, mm -hmm. but it's not on the serial production right now, but we have learned a lot of things from them. So it's like learning from uh, everything. So try everything, learn from everything, and if there's any mistake, so let's do another mm -hmm. project to correct it. Among the company's innovations are different models of e-buses, battery management systems, EV charging units, and more. By the time we started the electrical bus, for example, there were no air compressor brands that, in, uh, that is running with the electric. Mm -hmm. Every electric compressor was in the market as a stationary, not for the vehicles. So we start using as, uh, air compressors uh, for the industrial usage and say that, okay, this is not running for the bus, so we have to do something and we need to build something, an air compressor for the bus. Then, we did something and we have found the, another manufacturer that is doing that. So in that way, we learned a lot of things. BMS is a significant innovation for Temsa, as the company not only develops battery management systems for its electric buses, but also supplies them to other industries. Temsa has its own software team for the battery management side, and they are building everything according to this uh, purpose. And we are not only uh, doing only one BMS, but we're also producing other BMS, like small BMS for the energy storage or other type of uh, energy storage uh, battery management system or new battery management systems for the marine production, which they can use. For example, we are working on sodium ion cells right now. Another strategic move is piloting battery passports in the partnership with MindSpider. According to the EU battery regulation, from 2027 and on, 
Each battery placed on the EU market must have a digital battery passport. At this moment, uh, you know, there's a battery passport uh, regulation and uh, step by step we are trying to build this structure. First, we start with uh, state of health and state of charge uh, calculations in the battery pack. Right now, we are doing all the calculations inside the battery pack and we can deliver it to the main server or we can uh, download it from the, from the pack. But at the same time, we need to do uh, all the supplier agreements. And this is going to take some time because not everybody is ready for this. And while you're supplying the battery packs, you're not supplying from one producer. Maybe this battery pack cell maker is getting the cells from somewhere else or supplying the cathode from another supplier and the separator is coming from somewhere else. Uh, so you need to track all these information. In fact, the battery passport should include extensive data about the battery, including information from cathode and anode suppliers and raw material providers. Gathering this data can be challenging and time-consuming. Currently, Temsa is working closely with MindSpider and is one of the first waves of OEMs to begin piloting the battery passport. We always start things uh, early because when you start things early, then you have time to uh, make it uh, perfect. Even if it's not regulatory or even if it's not a must to do, we must start it early in order to uh, build this uh, before the other competitors can do that. Because the longer you work on it, uh, more you can correct it and it can be a better product that you can supply for the customers. As mentioned, the company is pursuing an ambitious goal to have at least 50% of its sales come from electric buses by 2030. Burak believes that EVs will become increasingly affordable, helping us move toward a more sustainable and electrified future. At the moment, electric vehicle uh, business is a costly business because of the batteries. But right now, the battery prices are getting lower. So we believe that uh, after some period of time, the battery bus and the diesel bus will be selling at the same price. Right now, it happened in the automotive sector. In fact, EV battery pack costs have dropped over the last 15 years. In 2024, they fell below $120 per kilowatt hour with further declines expected to $80 per kilowatt hour by 2026 and $60 per kilowatt hour by 2027, 2030. LFP chemistry, cheaper raw materials, mass manufacturing and design innovations are accelerating this trend, bringing EVs ever closer to price parity with petrol vehicles. In the old times, actually like, like 10 years ago, the most important part was the the range of the battery. For example, the more battery you put on the vehicle, it's better because they are asking for a range. But right now it's changing. Right now they're asking for fast charging. For example, let's say you have an internal combustion engine vehicle right now and you go to a petrol station and it only takes you for like four minutes or five minutes to fill the whole car. But in the bus business and the coach business, it's not like that. Even if the petrol you need to wait at least 15 minutes in order to fulfill like 600 liters or 500 liters of tank. But if you do the same thing with the electric version, that means that uh, you, can, you, can, you can solve all the problems because the problem is not the range right now. The problem is the, is the charge problem. We are working on the new chemistries and new battery management systems mm -hmm. that is speeding up the balancing uh, process and especially on the artificial intelligence uh, side, it's very important to collect all the data from the cells and trying to predict what is going to happen in the future. If this cell is going to malfunction, if this cell is going to be a problem in the future, and we are trying to predict this. 